I'll never forget my first experience with Resident Evil. One of my friends brought it over, and I remember us laughing about how stupid we thought the name was. But we thought we'd check it out for a good laugh. And laugh we did. Until we rounded that corner where you meet the first zombie, it's the perfect setup for what's to come. You hear him eating, and then he turns around, blood-drenched mouth and all. Then not long after that, we almost had a heart attack when the dogs jumped through the windows. That first game set a tone not found in many other video games. Over the years, the franchise drifted away from its roots. Somehow, Resident Evil 7 is both a new direction and a return to form, and that's not even taken into account that the entire game is playable in VR. For this review, I want to focus on story, gameplay, graphics and immersion, and then at the end I'll have some final thoughts. In this video, the footage you're seeing is all from the early parts of the game. I didn't want you to see anything that would spoil the story for you. The game's beginning is more akin to Texas Chainsaw Massacre than Resident Evil. You're Ethan, arriving at the Baker's Mansion to rescue your long-missing wife, Mia. As it turns out, this probably wasn't the best idea. For a while, you feel a sense of dread and what hopelessness. Is what is it? You're in lonely and unfamiliar territory. You'll find out about what happened through looking at various items in, in every room. One of the coolest aspects of how the story unfolds is the inclusion of VHS tapes you can watch that give you clues as to what happened and also serve as a practice run for things in your near future. Once the tapes start, you actually take control and play through the sequences. It's a great storytelling device. I don't want to ruin the story for you. All I can say is that when you walk into the main hall for the first time, the memories come rushing back as it truly begins to feel like Resident Evil. Throughout my nine and a half hour playthrough, I was never comfortable. I mean that in the best way. Between the dread of not knowing what's going to jump out at you and then things actually jumping out at you, it never lets up. I mentioned earlier that the series gameplay had changed in the later entries, and this game is a return to form. The puzzles, item management, and save system are classic Resident Evil. It's also amazing how well the entire package works in first person. For me, the ammo and weapons were utilized perfectly. Not so scarce that you feel overwhelmed, and not so plentiful that you feel unstoppable. As a matter of fact, throughout the game, you feel very stoppable. In VR mode, you use the head tracking to aim, which I still think is the single best method of aiming in first person. There are many ways to play this game. You can choose between normal mode and VR mode. Normal mode is your standard first person shooter control scheme. But in VR mode, you have various comfort settings and movement styles and I opted for the fastest, most fluid control scheme that plays exactly like it would if you were playing it in normal mode, with the added ability to look around in your environment and aim with your head. Now, I can only recommend this control scheme if you have some serious VR legs. Even if you've never been sick in VR, you could find yourself needing some fresh air. I'll give you a tip, though. Anytime you turn left or right, do it quickly. It also helps if you close your eyes while turning. Overall, I don't think we could have asked for a better, more customizable setup. In every VR review, I like to discuss graphics and immersion. And I've admitted in the past that I play my VR games with the rosiest of rose-colored glasses. Resident Evil 7 offers us something we've never had before. It's the first game to be completely playable, beginning to end, in or out of VR. Because of this, I was able to switch back and forth and pretty much on the fly. Let me put it this way. For Resident Evil 7, you will be making a choice. Do you want graphics or do you want immersion? 
In VR mode, the sound design and immersion that virtual reality affords make this game almost too scary for some. Many VR games benefit from giving you the feeling you're actually present in that world. The problem here is, this is not a world in which you want to be present. It's an intense experience that can be overwhelming at times. But, as is the case with all VR games, the graphics are just a tad downgraded and the image isn't quite as bright. In normal mode, the game is beautiful. The textures, models, and lighting are all more detailed than what you see in the VR headset. The normal mode is less immersive, which may actually be more enjoyable for some people. I can tell this game was designed with VR in mind. Just about everyone and everything you come into contact with is in your face. The truth is, this game is awesome, whether you play it in VR or not. Capcom has done right by PSVR owners, and all gamers alike. I hope other developers will take notice and give us the option to VR or not to VR in most games. I feel like this is truly the path forward for AAA experiences in virtual reality. It gives us more VR content while taking away the financial risk by letting gamers buy and play it in normal mode if they so choose. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Have you played Resident Evil 7? If so, what did you think? If not, I hope you get the chance to visit the Baker Mansion soon. It's okay. It's okay. It's me. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. You shouldn't have done that! It fucking hurts! Must 